So what do you think? Have you made bad choices and are looking for help? Is it time to come back to trusting God? Blaming others never worked. So why not? You know, when I was a little boy, my father taught me there are two ways in life, the right way and the wrong way. As a young boy, I really wasn't sure what he was trying to tell me. He was teaching me that a choice results in an outcome. As I got older, I learned that choices are hard to make alone. Things are not always what they seem. Dave here with another video to show you how God puts you on the right track by coming back to trusting God. Look at Proverbs chapter 16, verse 25. And it says, there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way to death. That's Proverbs chapter 16, verse 25. As I said before, things are not always what they seem. Proverbs warns that we can be deceived into believing we are going down the right path and doing right when in fact we are way off path going into the darkness of being lost. When our moral compass and our spiritual compass are wrong, we are heading toward a spiritual death. That means we are heading toward the opposite direction from God's will. Our spiritual compass is misaligned when the Holy Spirit is not involved. Because we are all born into sin, people do not naturally seek God or pursue righteousness. You don't believe me? Romans Chapter 3, verse 10 through 18 says it best, and it says, As it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks God. All have turned away. They have together become worthless. There is no one who does good not even one. Their throats are open graves. Their tongues practice deceit. The poison of vipers is on their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Ruin and misery mark their ways. And the way of peace they do not know. There is no fear of God before their eyes. And that is from Romans chapter 3, verse 10 through 18. Only as the Spirit awakens our hearts to the person of Christ are we able to desire God's will. There is nothing but being totally lost without the Holy Spirit. The problem is, Without the Holy Spirit, we don't know we are lost. If we make decisions apart from the guidance of the Spirit of God, we will be like a ship trying to sail without a compass. We will do what makes the most sense based on our own wisdom. But what looks attractive may actually lead to sin ultimately destroying what is precious to us. For our most profound human thinking is mere foolishness to God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18 through 20, again, that's 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18 through 20, the scripture says, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent, I will frustrate. Where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? 
And that is in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18 through 20. Only God knows the way that leads to life, and he wants to lead us to walk in it. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 through 14, again, Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 through 14, the scripture says, Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate, and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. And that is in Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 through 14. Don't assume every opportunity that arises is from God. Understand this. Satan will disguise himself as an angel of light and his invitations will seem to be in your best interest. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14, again, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14, the scripture says, and no wonder for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. That's Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14. Remember, Satan's way leads only to death. The way of the devil is the ending of life. That's a bad thing. Don't get trapped. Let's look at John chapter 8, verse 44. Again, John chapter 8, verse 44. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language for he is a liar and the father of lies. And that is in John chapter 8, verse 44. With Holy Spirit guidance and a focus on God's word written in the Bible, we can be saved and headed in the direction God intended us to go. It's all in the Bible, and we call it the word of God because it is his promise. The word of God will be like a light to your path, guiding you in the ways of righteousness. Take a moment and look at Psalms 119 verse 105. Again, Psalms 119 verse 105. Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. Again, Psalms 119, verse 105. You see, it can be dangerous to follow a path that seems right without first consulting the Holy Spirit for guidance. Did you hear that? Did you? I'll say it again. It can be dangerous to follow a path that seems right without first consulting the Holy Spirit for guidance. Look at John chapter 16, verse 13. Again, John chapter 16, verse 13. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. And that is in John chapter 16, verse 13. Take time and effort to seek the Holy Spirit's direction when you face decisions. The Holy Spirit knows the full outcome of your choices. So let the Holy Spirit steer you in the right direction. Why not? The Holy Spirit will assist you to understand the experience of a joyful, abundant life. Trust him as he leads you. Come back to trusting God. From the Resurrection Center, my name is Dave.